Okay. Seriously. Sing and goggle. So you ready to go? I'm ready to go. You got your notes? Yes. You sure? Your brain is not your notes. Yes, it is. <laughs> is it big enough? I find that, I find that rather insulting. I, rather, I find it rather insulting. I just made a day. <laughs> All right. It's the good way to warm up. You are listening to episode 35 of Alternating with Eric. I am Connor. I'm a musician, a bit of a soundie. And every week uh, we review anime and we may be doing some other stuff. Uh, we, we alternate from different show to show. And uh, sometimes we have a different guest on. Uh, well, that's what we're planning to do more in the future. But usually I alternate with my friend, my buddy, my Russian martial artist friend. <laughs> yes, that is me. I am Eric. I am a Russian martial artist who enjoys, I guess, drinking a lot and beating people up. I don't know. This is what I'm typical thinking. Typical Russian. Yeah, th this is uh, it's your typical <laughs> Russian. <laughs> my typical Russian comes from whatever my family does and oh boy. That's a different story. <laughs> at some point, you're going to have to introduce the show like in Russian. I think, mm. I think we really should at some point. Well, you've told me to either introduce the show in German or Russian. I'm not sure which well, one you I can, do it. I could do it in German and you could okay. do it in, I could do it in Dutch and then, then that's more authentic to, to me because I'm part Dutch. So, Oh, I'll do it in Russian at some point. Well, yeah. We have a guest well, who um, we want to have on who speaks German and Dutch and... Um, because German and Dutch have some similar words. Mm. So if I spoke German, he'd understand it. If I spoke Dutch, he'd probably understand it. But uh, we're planning on having him on in the future at some point. And um, I don't know if you can hear my voice is still warming up a bit. Had a couple cups of teas. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so we, yeah, we mostly review stuff. And um, that might be changing. We're 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 working on it, but we're always going to be alternating from a different topic to topic. And uh, speaking of um, alternating and doing things, Eric, <laughs> what have you been up to? What have I been up to this week? Oh, I've been, I guess, alternating between different <laughs> shows on Netflix. Yes, All just because right. you can make bad <laughs> jokes doesn't mean I can't. Uh, and those shows have been managed to watch another episode of The Great Plunderer. And my oh, the my great th pretender, the great pretender. Whoops! Why, why did you say the great plunder? Oh, because I was <laughs> like, what shows here? A while, because a while ago <laughs> I was watching the show called The Plunderer, and I just got uh, them mixed up, and I don't know how I was that like, happened. Some bootleg version of the great pretender, some like <laughs> Russian knockoff version. <laughs> Oh, oh yes, um, I'm the great plunderer. <laughs> I plunder every day. No. It's like a 1920s um, American uh, sing along. No, um, it's a fifth. It's a song from the fifth. Wait, sounds like from the 20s. Have you seen Great? You, you've seen the ending for Great Pretender. Yes, that you know the song at the end. It's called the Great Pretender. Oh yes, I'm the Great Pretender. Oh, is it? Pretending uh. that I'm doing well. I mean, I'm singing the Platers version from mm. the 50s, but. <laughs> it's it's a fifty song that then Queen covered in like the eighties. Oh, oh like is it going oh into God. the nineties? It was right before he died. Oh, sounds like something. Oh, it just sounds something of, like from the twenties. Yeah, I guess <laughs> it's, it's got that sort of style. Though. Yeah, I can't. I can never tell. Like in that um period, like from the twenties to the fifties, it almost um the beat. You know, the beats, the style, almost sound the well, same. Well, there's to a me. jazz influence probably still mm -hmm. there, and that's probably what yeah. you're hearing. But um, mm -hmm. there is a diff definite difference like mm. in the vocal well i i would say in like some of the harmony styles and some of the and also those songs wouldn't have in the 20s have an electric guitar in it and i'm pretty sure the great pretender has like some sort of electronic instrument in there so oh yeah well at least in case. The, well <laughs> definitely in the bloody queen version yeah <laughs> well in any case i'm still watching um i've managed to watch one episode and i still think 
those guys are probably going to die by the end of this. Because <laughs> <laughs> seriously, you cannot get away with, um, you know, uh, uh, dodging a mobster you'd like be that. be surprised. And uh, two other shows I've been watching was a show called Chicago Fire. Okay. Which is part of a, um, a Chicago, uh, Chicago oh, TV Chicago series. PD, yeah, and yeah. P- Chicago Med. Yeah, that's the one with, that's the one with the Husky voice, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> the, it's the, uh, it's the um, one Guys, with the voice of the guy. you go get me some more cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, it's the guy who smokes <laughs> too many cigarettes and then asks for more while he still has that's a few in know, his mouth. my flatmate used to watch it all the time. And then, and all those cop shows just run together for mm. me. But I could tell he was always watching Chicago PD because if I heard just, <laughs> but, oh, he's watching Chicago PD. <laughs> uh, I think that's what makes it unique. Just a character who stands out <clears throat> to make the show. Well, you show. always have kind of a grumpy chief, but this mm-hmm. one's like, I'm too old for this shit. I've been smoking for 45 years. I don't think, I don't think he even thinks he's too old for this shit. Chicago so Fire he's not, has... He's not um, the Danny Glover type. Nah, you know, no. That would, be, um, that would be the lead um, chief from Chicago Fire named Bowden. Gee, That'd you're, be... watching, you're watching these a lot. I like them, actually. I it's find really them really nice. repetitive. I like them when I was in high school when they were like reruns. You there know, are... Law and Order and shit. I just haven't, um, I haven't watched one of, some of these shows where there's an actual human feel to it. Mm. Um, and this has got some human feel to it, which is, mm-hmm. which is something I like. And the other show I'm watching, which is like way far away from any human feelings of love and affection is happy with an exclamation mark, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is a show about a guy who is a disgraced cop and now turned hitman who has to rescue, um, a little girl with the help of, um, the little girl's imaginary friend, mm-hmm. which is a tiny flying unicorn, blue yeah. unicorn. Yeah. This is not made up. It's all real. No, I've read and the comics. So yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. This is, this is real. This is just hilarious. It's like watching Deadpool, but with a guy who's miserable. Yeah. It's written by Grant Morrison. I yeah. think. I, I'm pretty sure it's a Grant Morrison thing. Yeah. And I'm really enjoying it so far. <laughs> and mm-hmm. um, yeah, this, this kind of show doesn't really shy away from a lot of, I guess, issues or any sort of, well... It, it's kind of like the Chappelle show. It doesn't shy away from telling people anything mm. in the you know a crude and rather. I, I'm sorry. I just manner. have to apologize. I hope um, that we could sort of hear uh, Eric's flatmates. So hopefully they're not picking up on the mic. But I'll, I'll apologize for that now. But mm-hmm. yeah, as you were saying. Yeah, uh, I like it because it doesn't hold back on crude and offensive humor. Mm. And what have I else? I've, in terms of what I've been reading, I've still been reading a little bit of Uzumaki, mm. which is, um, yeah, which is not that bad. And yeah, which is yeah, which is still a pretty interesting read. But I feel like I'm reading it rather slowly because mm. it does feel like it's dragging on a bit. So, Eric, what have you been up to other than watching stuff? Um, I, I hear you've got a, a new security. You've had some new security work lately. I yes. know you don't talk about work a lot on the podcast, <laughs> but... Um... Not the government work, security work I'd love to talk about. Um, this is something that's, yeah, something I'm transitioning to. So Eric's to. been wanting to do this for a long time, and um, I bring this mm. up because, yeah, this is something that I know means a lot to him. And it might associate better with my title of being the Russian martial artist. Yeah, Russian <laughs> martial artist who also guards clubs. Uh, clubs, parties, private venues. Are you um, allowed to be working at a club and use a spike club? No, no, no. <laughs> what? No. You can't club people at the club? I don't think I'm allowed Directly to carry any it. weapons like that. We, we, by the way, on this podcast, do not encourage any uh, violence or any... <laughs> I mean, I don't. I'm not sure about you. <laughs> All right. Well, well, as you're saying, actually, I'm I'm kind of hoping nobody goes back to a um to each of our podcasts and <laughs> puts them together a compilation of every time All I right. encourage violence. Okay. All right. As you were saying, Eric, you uh you've you've got this new security job. So, well, it's just more like I'm training for it. So mm-hmm. that's I'm hoping at least to something like a job. And when it does, I'll be able to just sit back, relax, and crack the skulls of anyone who decides to come to me and starting a fight. Of course, Eric oh, is very it. mature and won't do that sort of thing. He's going to be very courteous, and he's a very nice security guard. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He says this. Your but... job, though, I, I I would love if you get it because then you're going to have some interesting stories you can probably tell on the podcast if you're allowed to. Of course, I know some legally things. I can. 
And then if the police get involved, that's a different story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, you'll have some interesting stories to tell because my job is just, I, I, I just work at a conveyor belt place at the moment. That's why I don't talk about work. It's kind of boring. Oh, uh, it's still, it'll still be pretty exciting. You can always find some strange things rolling across. No, we never, it's, it's beer. You don't get much <laughs> interesting in that. Ladies and gentlemen, he works at a beer factory and he says it's boring. What a disgrace. That's <laughs> getting. <laughs> Not as exciting as you think. Yeah, you do. T- yeah, you do tell me that. I would have thought it'd be more exciting to be on a nah, conveyor belt. Because I'm just, that beer. I'm just stickering and stackering. That's that's all I do. Bloody hell! Stick, stack, stick, stack, stick, stack, stick, stack, stick, stack, stick. stack, stick. That's all I do for like. Eight hours a day. <laughs> uh-huh. As repetitive <laughs> as that this. might be, at least you're, um, you know, getting some exercise out of it. Yeah, and I'm standing on my feet for the most part. Yeah, and actually building up some, uh, building up some muscle on you because uh, you still look skinny no. as hell. No, I, I'm not building any muscle. <laughs> I'll keep doing it for a bit longer. You'll, you'll probably get it. No, I'm not. I've lost a bit of weight, but that's that's because I'm, I'm living uh, in a new place now. Mm. Um, we're not recording from there because I. I'm trying to be relatively quiet at my new place. It's in town, uh, which won't mean anything for our international listeners. But basically, we live in I live in like the central now Wellington town. If anybody's been in Wellington from overseas, yeah. in surprisingly a very cheap place. Like yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not going to say how much I pay for it, but it's it's relatively you cheap. pay pretty cheap. And this is coming from me, who knows you know. It's a nice room. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'm going to record in it. I might use the closet at some point for some. We, we could probably, I'd probably use it actually now that I've had a better look at it. Cue, the, cue every closet joke oh, you can I ever know. find. <laughs> but yeah, I could probably I could probably use the closet space to record in there. But um, I don't know. I prefer these, these face-to-face interviews I do with Eric here. Uh, Better chemistry. I think we interrupt each other a lot less than when we were doing the ones over Skype. I think we interrupt each other almost the same amount. It's a little like less. Uh, I can actually <laughs> tell now when your mouth's gonna like start opening versus like one of the podcasts we had to do like. And I can't because you've got an entire po- uh, filter right in front of your face. Yeah, but but do you remember when we like did? Um, we did like our Rose of Versailles review mm. and I had Eric on my phone because I didn't want to hold my computer the whole time because the fan noise picks up on the ca- um, on the mic. And um, <laughs> like Eric couldn't see me because I had to put the like uh, laptop on the ground and I had to tilt it slightly and you were probably just looking at my forehead the whole time <laughs> or just like the little upper part of my head because, you know. Oh, I remember that. I was like, I had to ask you several times, hey, is this normal? Are you doing it right? <laughs> what's going on? What are, what's happening? Yeah, are we recording? <laughs> <laughs> are, you, so, are you alive? So yeah, I'm in a new place. <laughs> um, I've been going out a lot actually this week. I've been, I really need to cook tonight because I've, I've, I've left, I've got like at least four things of meat. Um, <laughs> that might last till next week, so I need to definitely use... Don't, don't assume they would, just get them I know, I, I had a second opinion, and then he said they probably would, so... And I trust that second opinion. Why so. was I not your second opinion? Just kidding. Because you went there when I got uh, the mm. issue, so... Yeah. Um, and I turned my freezer yeah. up, because it was a little bit, like, it wasn't that cold. The only only thing there. you need to know is that beef and lamb are usually safer than fish, chicken, or pork. Yeah, I need to get from a chicken... Um, but my two things of beef are, my, well, my two things of chicken, one of them has been used mm. and I'll probably do fried chicken tonight. And then, um, shit, my other, I oh, yeah, I cooked like one of my chops. I had like a chop, like a full meat chop thing that I cooked up last night. It was real good. Nice. So I've, I've really cooked nothing except for pasta and meat. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I can see all your bloody pasta things here. I really should give you one of those packets. They're only 99 cents each. Yeah, I, I only pay about that much as well. Oh, my pasta. It's brilliant. Although I pay for mine uh, at a pack and save in Lower Hut, which is the cheapest pack and save I've been to so far. Oh, yeah. Which is really nice. So yeah, I, I, um, I moved, I've moved house. I'm in a new place. Um, I've been going out to a couple gigs because for those... Well, I mentioned at the start of the show, I'm a musician. And I've been gigging. Uh, again, and there's there's pros and cons to that. When because mm. I, I I've been so busy at work, I haven't had any chance to actually go out and gig. Oh yeah. 
So I finally uh, went out this week and that's been like both really good and really bad. It's fun to like go and gig, um, but there's one place I gig and like sometimes my crowd is like, uh, it can be, it can go from like four people to up to 20 people. But most of the time, if I'm at this like uh, open mic, I'm performing to like 12 people at the most. Okay, that doesn't Which, sound too bad, but... Yeah, it's not perfect, because most people, like, when you have that sort of crowd, um, you get, like, maybe, like, one of your songs, a lot of people might listen to the whole thing, um, especially if you do, like, a, like if you do a loud number, uh, people usually shut up, because they're like, oh, what's that? And they listen, um, <laughs> and then maybe afterwards they talk, like, for your second verse. But, but they pay attention in the first half, and that's usually, I usually, if I feel the crowd's, like, not really biting, I'll be like, well, fuck it, we'll do a loud song, it might work for the crowd. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, and, and sometimes you just don't really, um, you, they're not really biting um, sub mites, and you just, you know, you do, you do three songs, and people are just talking the entire time. Or not really, you know, paying much attention at all, even if they're, like, sort of listening. Um, and, and that's when you can either, you can be like, fuck it, I'm going to experiment and do some shit. Like, I'm going to see if I can do this note a certain way and see if anybody notices. <laughs> and, yeah, so that's usually what I'll, I'll do sometimes. Do they um, actually notice? Um... No. no. What I mean by, like, see if they'll notice is, like, I'll sing a note a little bit longer or, like, I'll, I'll go really quick on, like, something. So I did, like... Um, I did crazy this week. Not um, not the not the what, what, what's what's the guy what's the guy that did that song um fuck you you know I've been a driving around da, da, the girl I love and I said fuck you know that that guy did the um, I don't know I, I might be sing. crazy da, 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 da. I didn't do that song no I, I did don't. um I did the like country song you know crazy crazy for feeling mm. da, da, da. I did that song and um. there's like um. When I was finishing the song, it goes sort of like, I'm crazy that I am, I'm crazy for crying, I'm crazy for feeling. And and when I did feeling, I did crazy, but I'm crazy for feeling. And I did kind of like a, you know. Did anybody notice? No. <laughs> well, it's just, you're just, you're just deciding this week I'll end it a different way. <laughs> see, you know, or I'm going to see if I can hit a higher note at the end half of the song or a lower note with this end half of the song because I've got the guitar in my hand so if I want to take it down a key at like the last chord, I can, you know. That's mm. the only benefit. I'm not really that great of a guitarist though. <laughs> Just so it's, oh, don't say yeah. that. No, I'm not. Um, <laughs> and I, I, did, I did one open mic though. Um, and, and uh, it was Tuesday, I think. And that was actually not too bad. That was mostly musicians. So most people pay a bit more attention to that. Um, and I don't know if people liked what I did or not, to be honest, because people were just silent. And then there was a bit of clapping afterwards. And I was like, did they like it? Did they not like it? And um, I did two originals for that. Okay. Two original yeah. songs. Um, and I, I, I absolutely hate songwriting. Uh, that's that's as a, as a musician, I love writing like music. Like I love coming up with like a jingle or a melody, but um, I cannot stand doing like the lyric part. <laughs> I just don't like writing lyrics. It's just you know, I I don't yeah I don't always like what I write. But I thought fuck it, I'll do two originals. I did two originals um, on both of the mics, and yeah, they went yeah. I don't know. It's it's weird putting yourself out there when you do this sort of thing because um, if you've never done like your originals and you do them for the first time, and people aren't like clapping or you know aren't like impressed, you're like, was you're you're kind of a little upset. You're not trying to be like entitled, and I'm trying not to be entitled about it. You know, mm. like I shouldn't be expecting every you know. So, but but sometimes when you put like a lot of effort into like the you know the chords and stuff, you're like, oh, I hope people people like this. It's hard. You know. It's hard to really get people to, yeah, you know, like some of the things that you do or or yeah. you know sing about even, uh, especially since maybe some of these people um have a particular musical ear. Yeah. So nothing, nothing well, will get them paying attention. I found it's the right hard note. because I I was singing about you know I'm when I write lyrics mm. as most people do you have to be a little bit vulnerable to write good stuff usually, 
And so you have to put yourself out there and you have to put out like some thoughts and stuff. And when I did that and I got kind of like a lax, you know, part of me was like, well, maybe some people liked it and that's why they don't talk and that's usually a good thing. Mm. Um, but another part of me was like, I sang about this and no one really seemed to care and I've really put myself out there and, you know, I'm trying not to be entitled, but, but it, I mean, Eric as well uh, is, has been an artist in the past and has done some art and theater and stuff. So mm. you probably know this thing of, you know, you put a lot of effort into doing something. <laughs> And then no one notices or no one really mm. says anything. And, not, and you, you kind you of know. doubt yourself. You, you can't, don't really know whether you've done one good thing, or bad. One thing I realized, um, you know, when doing art is that effort doesn't exactly qualify or um, yeah. translate, translate <laughs> to um, the popularity that you require. What, it, what you should actually just do is just make something. You know? I know, I know. If there's an image that comes to your mind, do it. Yeah. You know, you don't have to copy off of anyone. You don't have to, you know, tell yourself, I'm going to reach the perfection of a picture, you know. I'm I going do to paint sometimes do that, though, because I'm a bloody perfectionist. Mm. And I get, that's the thing with me of songwriting. Like, I, I'll write, like, seven or eight songs, and I will, like, rip off, I will rip up, like, every, like, six pages I've done of it. And I won't have, like, a fully written, like, lyrically song until, like, I've written maybe, like, ten pages just of the first verse. <laughs> oh jeez! And there'll be like ten pages that I've just like ripped out that have just been like, no, that's not good. No, that's not good. No, that's not good. And then by the tenth one, I'm like, okay, parts of this might work. Yeah, they could. They could definitely work. Um, I'm basically saying I do yeah. a lot of fucking drafts when I'm when I'm writing. I can be- I can believe that you'd definitely be. <laughs> the recording this show has made me realize that. One, you don't do things um, the first time unless they do sound good. And second, if they don't sound good, you're going to keep going until they... Uh, yeah, does. yeah. I, I, I really like to make sure that we're putting out something good. I know we've had some issues um, that I just haven't been able to fix. Hopefully you guys aren't hearing like me double, which we've been mm-hmm. having a, a problem with recently. Because yeah, I still have no idea how that happens sometimes. I know now how it's happening. It's because I'm not close enough to the mic and the way this room works, um, it echoes a bit. So hopefully you guys aren't getting a really bad echoing issue. Um, I know like last podcast, it was really echoing during the first half and then all of a sudden it was like fine for the rest. So I don't know if that was just me getting closer to the mic or further away, but we'll see how this sounds. But uh, yeah, I th- that's that's been me, and so let's take a small break, so Eric can stop looking at his phone, and uh, read, <laughs> <laughs> or he can look at his phone and look up some of the notes. I hope that's what he's doing. I'm looking, I'm looking at an address, just making sure that I've got it in here. I do these random things that I should have done before, and then I just do them in the middle of the things. While on I the just... podcast, yeah. Yes. Just to show off my great skills and multitasking. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. All right. We'll be back after the break. See ya. back from the break this is eric again and we're going to be reviewing our anime and manga for today and i believe connor has chosen these two and connor what have you chosen so we have a theme uh this week and i need to try and remember what it was (laughs) it was going to be music Um, did you say shoujo or something i mean uh, so I've got a weird thing in my throat at the moment. I'm trying to clear it. Um, I'll see. I think I texted you the theme this week, actually. Yeah, you so, said shoujo. <laughs> yeah. No, I forget it was shoujo something. Uh, um, okay. Let me see. Oh, I, I, okay. So the theme is shoujo drama. Oh. But um, I'm going to call this theme fame. <laughs> Our theme is fame, how you chase it, where you're going with it, you know. Mm. What what does it take when you want to get famous? You know what 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 roads, what places do you have to go? Yeah, 
I think with these two because, mangas, because both are be... both are uh, anime and manga kind of involves fame in a little bit. Uh, yeah, one, one of them one mostly involves so. one person's um chase to a uh, life yep. where they're not stuck um on the surface level of things and want to understand everything in depth. Mm. The other is just someone who has gone to fame, fallen from it, yeah, and now trying to pick up the pieces of their life later yep. on. So we um we kind of teased this last week because I talked about it a little bit. So mm. I, I finally got on to watching the show uh, Nana. I had mm. I'd never actually seen it. I'd put off watching it because I didn't actually like the artwork in the mm. um, anime when I saw it the first time. I remember the manga covers I thought looked all right. But I remember when I saw the anime, I thought the designs looked kind of ugly, like mostly the guys, because <laughs> um, the guys do look a bit femmy, let's <laughs> be honest. They look a little bit weird. Like, just the eyes and the lips as well. Unless, just, uh, it depends on which guys you're talking about and which ones are portrayed by the main character. Yeah, but but I, I watched the show and it was funny and I enjoyed myself watching it. Um, and I, I enjoyed both the characters. So, mm. let's talk a little bit about what Nana's about. So, the series follows uh, Nana Komatsu, who is a girl from a small town. She took the midnight train going anywhere. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Just a small town, but no. Nah, Get I'll... out. <laughs> I was going to see if Eric would notice that. <laughs> uh, and she she basically... <laughs> do not even. Do <laughs> not even. Eric doesn't like Journey. That's all I'm getting from this. All right, Mr. Steve Perry hater. All right, so... No, um... it's just that I've heard that song being repeated as a... You know, as a comedy Going and... On and on. <laughs> yes. Stop. Repeated so much. It's gotten old. Ben. All right, so before we get sued, uh, I'll get back into this. <laughs> so she um, she lives in this small town, and she keeps on falling in love with different guys, and she eventually sort of finds this guy in a friend group, and it's about her sort of going to the big city to... She's basically going there to meet with him, and, and she kind of wants to become his wife. That's basically what she wants. Um, and then we've got another person who's also called Nana, uh, Osaki, and she... Plays in kind of a punk rock band. I say kind of. I don't really count it as being that much. It's more. It's more kind of just rock. Um, it's mm. more like early two thousands nineties rock sort of thing. Uh, the yeah, I, I would compare it to like. Um, I, I think I've got a comparison here. I would compare it to like Hailstorm and Avril Lavigne. I'd say like it's a mixture of those two, like in terms of music style. Yeah, considering the opening of the anime, I would actually, I would actually support that. Yeah, yeah. it's it's pretty poppy, and it's 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 like kind of do doing punk, but it's got kind of a pop feel to it. Mm. Uh, and she basically plans to like go be famous. Um, there's a short part where I was thinking like, oh, she's also chasing after a guy as well. And you could also sort of go for that, but she's mostly just going because she wants to be famous as well. And uh, these two basically meet on a train and they keep on bumping into each other. And it's sort of about how their lives sort of both intertwine together. And yeah. Yeah, which which strangely enough only seems to indicated only seems to be um portrayed in the first episode or the other two episodes that i well, watched other, are the other episodes i give a lot of backstory and yeah. then they sort of um have their and it seems like a low a very me- slow lead up to any sort mm. of true interaction and um relationship between the two nanas mm. Mm. i mean it's not a bad thing but at the same time watching the life of nana komatsu is like watching a the silliest train wreck I've ever seen. Seriously. So, so uh, what, what were your overall thoughts of this at first? Because this is a very popular um, I, shoujo. Series. I know you. I know you're gonna. I know you're saying you didn't like the um, animation. Of no, it. I didn't like the art when I first. Oh, the I, art. I like oh, okay. it now, but I didn't like it then. I didn't like the way the guys looked. Yeah, I like it. I like it because it reminds me of you know a good you know what what a slapstick comedy would have mm-hmm. something like Azumanga Daio. Wait, you um, think the art reminds you of that? Yeah, I mean, really? not the art, the um, the animation and uh, the style okay. of it. I think the art style was the thing that put me off. Was okay. like, with the with the way the anime did it, like the coloring mm. and stuff was a bit honey and clover like looking sort of thing, which it it is a rather wasn't generic. my thing at, at when I saw it. 
Everything looked rather generic. Uh, in I some... wouldn't say that. It's more just the lips and oh, the noses yeah. and stuff, just the way that was drawn. I wasn't like the re- the semi-realistic mm. style that has a bit of a... Just for the good-looking people or... Yeah, I, also, I would... It's just the guys. The guys look very femmy and very, yeah. like... There's, there's, everybody there's... looks like they've came out of, like, a Korean buddy... Um, yeah. Like surgery, yeah. <laughs> thing a little bit. Like I think one thing. Everybody looks like they've had a bit of plastic surgery done. More or less. I think one thing that's actually kind of put me off is the facial structure for Nana Komatsu. Like in looking at her, that's what face I mean. Alone, Some of yeah. the guys and even the main girl, not not um Osaki, the not the punk girl, the other girl. The faces yeah. and the noses and stuff look. It a just bit looks like weird. It looks like um Nana Ozaki. She seems to be the more structurally um you know, level character mm, in mm. terms of design. Yeah. And, you know, it seems to be pretty easy because it could be, she could be, you know, standard generic punk rock, punk yeah. rock um, artist, mm, mm. which is, you know, one, it's easy, but two, I mean, yeah. that's, you know, it's easy. Yeah. Uh, so it's both a good and a bad thing for a mm. character like that. Uh, but I mean, in terms of her, um, her overall character, I like it so far. I like so, it so, far, so you, you know? like the show... In general, like if I can skip past the Nana Komatsu part, I might actually like it because okay. I don't so know. I, there's some we're already, parts we're already getting to the cons already. Yeah, because there's some it. parts of Nana Komatsu that I like, but there's also a lot of things I that, don't. That's like. actually my it's, con too. Yeah. Um, so I I really enjoyed the first two episodes, and then the third episode where I realized they're still following her. Yeah. I I didn't like it after all. She did get kind of annoying and a bit whiny after a while and yeah, yes. that was that was my issue as well. And it's her whole um whole persona persona of um this naive girl who doesn't understand relationship with men that's I don't know. It's I don't know. I don't I don't want to slut shame anyone like Well, it, we're not we're not slut shaming. I like I like the fact that the characters in this do mm. have they don't show it, but I did like that. At least they kind of implies that they have oh, sexual okay. relationships and that they're actually oh, dating yeah, and true. stuff. That is such a fucking fresh of fresh air, uh, fresh air of this anime Breath stuff. Of fresh air. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. so many anime, we watch these bloody harem shows or these other shows where like the guy is essentially dating like six people, but he never gets of any of them. And he, he and what is wrong? He with basically that? Just he <laughs> basically like cock blocks himself every five minutes of every single one of these girls. Mm. This is this one where it's like no, she she she's been around, she's yeah. dated like, and that's kind of realistic. I think it's, Infinite Stratos definitely comes know. to mind, yeah, especially with the main character whose um, brain has been replaced. Well, with I a was brick. thinking like fucking Love Hina and shit like that, where there's just oh one dude yeah, and there's all these girls who want to bloody bang him, and he just doesn't do anything. Mm. There's just lots of episodes of, oh, don't do that. <laughs> well, why did I slip and accidentally sexually? Yeah, it's like, ugh. Oh, my God. At least this one, it's sort of, you know, the, you know, Osaki's also in, like, a relationship with one of her band members, and that just, you know, that makes sense. Mm. Um, And then Nana, yeah, Nana's in, like, a lot of relationships. Now, there are some ones where it's, like, um, she's not in, like, good relationships, but I don't know. I, I, I liked that at least, like, it's... She's in relationships. She's you know lots of people date lots of people yeah. and and there's some there's some aspects of the relationships that um Nana Komatsu has yeah. that's um that but is that is that is that isn't taken, she's got lots of yeah. faults yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. Get me and wrong it's those there. faults that are you know quite realistic instead yeah. of whatever the stereotype is from any, yeah yeah and it's yeah. not just I don't know like um her her problem is she gets really attached to people real quickly yeah, but it's not wrong. like. It's not like the anime attachment thing where it's mm. like I'm attracted to some weird, you know, you're the wimpiest, like most loserous guy, but I'm attracted to you mm-hmm. because you have fire powers or you can control the mecha. I'm attracted to you because you have main character, character status. status. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say that. <laughs> Although in some ways, if I knew a girl who had a giant robot and she looked decent, I might also be slightly attracted to <laughs> To the girl or to the robot. To the girl, be obviously. Honest. To the girl, be obviously. Be honest. No, to the girl. Although, yeah, if, she, if she had a really good guitar, I might be like, eh. <laughs> There we go. There's the weird There's the weird part of you. We, um, I wouldn't want to fuck the part. guitar. I'd be like, I'd still want her. I would just be like, can I also play your Gibson Les Paul? <laughs> While you're fucking her. Well, I don't know if I'd go that far. 
<laughs> I, think I don't want to get it dirty. I think Eric. I think I you wanna, do no, it. I, don't I think it. you do it. No, no. I, I am such a bloody <laughs> nerd for guitar shit. I would not want to get anything dirty on that list, Paul. I'd be like, no, no. It's got to be. Can, I it's can. It's got to be in the case. It's got to be clean. I will play it later, but I am not getting anything messy on it because then I have to like clean it up and and water might not get it out. I can know. actually I can actually see you uh playing something <laughs> like I don't know, the immigration song by Led Zeppelin while you're basically I can't play that well. What? <laughs> it's not that hard. Just um what just do you learn... mean not that hard? There's a dun, dun, dun. you think it's a maybe dun, dun, Yeah, maybe dun, that section's dun, not dun, that hard, dun, but dun, the solo in that dun, is not easy. Dun, 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 dun. And the <laughs> vocals on that are not easy. And playing both of those at the same time is not easy. Do you think we should go back to the topic at hand? We're we're veering off way. Well, we are talking about music technically, <laughs> so <laughs> not the music in the anime. All right, all right. Jesus. And speaking of, <laughs> speaking of uh, sex and the... Gibson, <laughs> the opening to Nana. That's the opening. Yeah, I, I kind of skipped it, even though I, I didn't mind the music. I watched it the first time and then I skipped it, not because yeah. I didn't like it, but just because I wanted to get into it. There's two. There, there's two parts. Um, I want to point out to the um mm-hmm. opening. With one is the lyrics, the other is the the beat and the flow of the mm-hmm. um the song the song. Yeah. Just the just the instrumental part. The instrumental part is great, and I actually like it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can follow that along. Yeah. The lyrics, well, the lyrics that... come from something like a. Avril Lavigne that, That's why I said from, It's kind yeah. of a poppy rock thing Because yeah. like I hated that A lot of people Were describing this As like a punk rock show I get mm. it Because the, the bass player Looks like Sid Vicious mm. The author clearly likes Like some of that Old punk stuff But she's clearly going For like that very Like early 2000s These Avril Lavigne Type girls Who are like I'm a punk rocker I play like mm. You know I listen to Blink-182 And Green Day so I'm a punk rocker, and they pull out their. So do I. That doesn't make me a punk they rocker. They buy their, you know, they buy their, um, <laughs> they buy like their little, you know, Stratocaster or whatever, mm. and they're like, I'm, I'm like a big, you know, punk rocker too. <laughs> and then they sing songs about like I don't know, um, some jaded ex boyfriend or something. <laughs> but they sing it in like the most like poppy, generic early two thousands Disney Channel kind of way. <laughs> not trying to be offensive uh, but it, okay i guess i am being offensive but no but yeah it's it's that sort of thing so i guess um, in terms of pros and cons just specifically for the opening song that's mine i don't know some of these for it, the ending i skipped that i just you know f- yeah. heard the first few bits and i thought eh, mm. and yeah i just didn't want to i do agree with you that the music it is i would classify this more as like alternative sort of um like alternative and pop punk. That's kind of what I would call the music in this. Mm. Like it's it's that sort of thing. Where it's yeah, it's more like commercialized sort of pop and, mm. and alternative rock stuff where it's sort of nineties, early two thousands thing, as I said. And the music, like the guitars and stuff, it, it's an, it's annoying because sometimes you'll hear the guitar and the bass and you're like, oh, it's going to be a really hard song. <laughs> and then you hear the lyrics and you're like, oh, no. And this is like those other rock songs. It's like, oh, sadly, why yes. did they put a really like aggressive, cool, like overdrive guitar? And then they put like the cheesiest, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I could totally picture them like being like, oh, we're going to do a really hard song. And then they do like an Evanescence song or something. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's that sort of type of music, but I don't know. I didn't completely hate it. Some of the music is okay. Like I, I, I like some of I liked some of these bands in the early two thousands, um, and I like I like some of this music sometimes, mm. but not all the time. It's not really my main thing, I'd say. And the equipment looks good. I'd say that like the actual um, I haven't seen Nana's, animation for yeah. them playing the guitar was actually pretty good. Like it wasn't yeah. a lot of shows when they do that, it goes straight to CG. So it was mm. nice that, um, at least from what I can remember, I haven't I haven't seen the show in a, in a couple of days, so I'm just trying to remember. Yeah. But I, I remember the animation gosh. was not like full-on CG guitar over yeah. 2D hands or whatever. There, like there's, only, there's only one part of the show where I've seen the CG actually occur, and that's when Nana actually goes into the, um, you know, when they have that scene with the doorway leading to Nana's apartment. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. Um, so that's the only CG part I've seen. Everything else just looks... You know, normal. Hmm. Mm. I guess if you want to call it that. 
But but I would I would say the show's the show's fun. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I'd keep. I actually I'd keep laughed watching at a couple it. moments, yeah. and and I like I like Nana Osaki a lot. She's an interesting character, mm. and the voice acting in the Japanese is really good. I didn't watch this. There's a dub for this. Wait, is it Nana Osaki or Ozaki? Uh shit. I see. I'm going off what I have written down. <laughs> um, I can't remember if it's Osaki. Or Let's Osaki. just go with Osaki and what you've written yeah. down. At least yeah. then we can always blame yeah. you for it. Yeah, you can blame me for <laughs> it. Um, but she, yeah, the voice acting. I wa- so I watched this in Japanese. I didn't watch this in English. Uh, I watched this in Japanese too. Yeah, I watched this. I couldn't find a Jap- uh, English one. Mm. And to be honest, I thought the show would be better in English. I'm not. I mean, I'm Japanese, so <laughs> I watched it in Japanese. And um, yeah, I like. I liked. The voice acting. Um, one, there was quite a famous voice actor actually voicing Osaki, and I didn't at first recognize it because I usually don't think she does that good with these type of roles, but she did really good. I think I know who you're talking about, but the name's not coming up. So to it's me. Romy Park who voices um, Nana yes. Osaki, and she mostly does boy voices. Yes. And most of the time when I've heard her in like a Japanese anime voicing a girl, the big problem I usually have is she still kind of sounds like a boy a little too much. <laughs> this is the first time I was like, she actually sounds like a woman, but she's also got that kind of gruffness that the character needs, but mm. it doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound too masculine versus like some of our other characters I've seen where it's like, no, nah, it sounds a little too masculine still. But I, I thought, yeah, I thought the, the, the sub was really good. Um, I believe they used a different voice for her singing. Because I don't think Grimmy Park does the singing parts. I think they had a different voice actor for that. And I didn't mind Komatsu's voice. She gets a little bit annoying sometimes, but I didn't mind her voice. Yeah, for most of the casting. I did like that. Um, so, Eric, you probably know this. Reggae is actually, um, there is like a little small reggae scene in Japan, I believe, of like people that like reggae and mm. kind of like that sort of, like I, when I went to Japan, there was a little, um, there was a little Jamaican restaurant actually not that far from where I was staying. Um, like they had like Bob Marley music and stuff playing in it and people with dreadlocks. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So when I saw the dude who was like one of the girl's um, boyfriends who's got like the dreadlocks and the little goatee thing, I was like, I was like, one, I was like, wow, that's, that's very like early 2000s mm-hmm. ska <laughs> music, kind of like, you know, these guys who are like in the punk and, and reggae mm. dressing sort of thing. He's like, oh, I've really listened to the No Doubt and shit like that. Um, not dissing No Doubt, just saying. But uh, this, to see that guy was like, oh, that's different. I haven't seen one of those type of guys in ages. <laughs> but that was a, you know, that was a, a trend sort of thing. And there's still, reggae, I think, still relatively, yeah over there like there's still a bit of a jamaican <laughs> i can imagine interesting that. there um so yeah it was kind of cool. and he's a, he was a cool character i guess he's mm. he's one of the guys who's dating um one of kabatsu's friends okay and you, you know yeah. you know you the the um the girl that's got her hair kind of oh done, right, done right. And like, yeah, or, I can't, oh yeah i can't remember are, her name we're back to <laughs> the anime junko or june some or one yeah maybe Jun- i'm thinking of someone else junko yeah yeah, it was Joe Junko, who was... Um, One of their main... friends from art school. Yeah, and someone who's got a very jaded personality. Or yeah. rather someone who's like a bit more down to earth than yeah. Komatsu. Like yeah. way more down yeah, to earth. Yeah, most of her friends, I'd say, are relatively quiet and down to earth. Except yeah. for her, well, her boyfriend is kind of just... Her boyfriend goofy. Her boyfriend is basically uh, Japanese Bob Marley. Yeah, no, just kidding. He, just, he was um, an interesting character, actually, I thought because he, he's the he's the Asian Rastafarian. No, I'm not talking about <laughs> him. That's 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 the guy I was talking about before, who's dating. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the one. That's the one. I mean, I mean Komatsu's boyfriend, the oh, blonde dude. Oh, oh, yeah. you, the dude um, who looks like he'd be in a K-pop band. He, I think he is in a K-pop <laughs> band. <laughs> um, he he's uh yeah, I I didn't mind his character. He, I was surprised of some of the directions they took in the show because mm. um. Most of the time, like I'm not, I'm not trying to stereotype here, but the Japanese relationship thing is like most of the older, you know, crowd and stuff with guys and stuff. Mm. There is kind of a thing where it's like, oh, the guy goes to work and the mum is the stay at home, you know, wife sort of thing gets pregnant, has the kid, that sort of thing. I found it kind of surprising that the guy was like, um, he they got into a bit of an argument because the guy essentially doesn't want her to be like that he wants her to go out and do her own thing and then maybe that happens later on 
because mm. she she essentially she just wanted to be like the stay at home mum. She and the like one of the yeah you know, in like the second episode. Oh yeah, she's like cleaning up his house. She's like doing all the cleaning. She went out for like job and housing stuff, but. I thought it was kind of weird that the guy was like, no, I want you to be in your own place and get your own job. I was like, it was kind of, I was like, oh, that's, that's, that's different. I was kind of surprised by that. I was also kind of surprised thinking like, wait, you don't want your girlfriend loving with you? Yeah, I thought you guys love each other for a little bit. And mm-hmm. Whatever. But is it, this, this is a rather strange situation I saw, and I just thought, oh, might be something else going on. So, yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe he just thinks she needs to do some growing up or something. I don't know. It was a. I think every character in the show needs a bit of growing up, except for Junko, who's um you so who's so grown up. She I may as well Osuke be. Osaki was pretty mature yeah. for her age. She she seems like she's pretty onto it. Mm. Oh, she, I mean, she had she had one like bad relationship, but that's pretty normal. I thought. Oh, I mean, the, not not a, not including Ozuki in the um circle of friends that oh, um Komatsu has. Yeah. I did like so you watched up to episode three, yeah. Yes. I did like that her um I think it's her drummer, you know, the guy with like the shades on and the bandana. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I did like that he basically came back like later on. And he's basically like he's like kind of her lawyer slash like bodyguard or whatever. Oh like, my god. I thought that was kind of an interesting dynamic. <laughs> like he, he he was kind of I don't know, he's a weird character because he almost felt like he was from a different show to me. <laughs> a little bit. Like he felt like one of those like um bad guys you'd see in cutie honey or something like one of the guy one of like those guys you'd see in a suit and who's like a shoujo bad guy <laughs> mm. who like you know attacks with guns or something but in the show he's like he's the chill as you know drummer which makes sense that's usually what the drummer is like in a band they're pretty chill they have to kind of keep everybody that they usually have to be the one person who when the singer and the guitarist fight they have to kind of step in and be like hey guys calm down we've got a gig this week <laughs> so I thought that was uh, kind of realistic, but yeah. What did you think? Uh, uh, final thoughts on on Nana, Eric? No, I definitely Good keep show. watching. Yeah, I I'd definitely keep watching it. It's quite likable. The characters, um, you know. I would watch yeah. an entire cut of this if it was just Nana Osaki and not Nana Komatsu, because I'm kind of sick of a character after like the third episode. Mm. I think we can um, drag this um, drag out our expectations of Osaki. If we just ignore Komatsu in the background, yeah, I didn't want to hate. Co- um, I didn't want to hate. Co- wait, did I say? Oh yeah, say so I wanted a whole cut of just Osaki. Mm. Yeah, I don't want to hate Komatsu, but it's just after a while, I just got kind of sick of her character. Mm. Um, because I've seen characters like this before, and then it's mature and it's well handled in some ways with her, but in other ways, I was just like, she's so annoying, <laughs> and she's yeah. And honestly, I would have preferred if she just became... I'm not trying to be mean. Girls can do what you know they want. But in some ways, I, 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 if she just became like the girlfriend of the main dude... Oh, yeah. And then it instead like focused on him and um, someone else, and then just also Osaki, then I'd be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, put her in the background a bit more. <laughs> She's not that interesting. Yeah, that so, could work. That could work. I don't know. I didn't find her that interesting after the third episode. <laughs> found it kind of annoying so yeah that's our thoughts on uh nana and maybe i'll continue watching this but uh yeah what, what did you think of the second manga though the cat street cat street. cat street yeah i thought oh this is a this uh, is almost like a blast from the past um almost reminds me of the <laughs> first manga we ever reviewed yeah, it is um, probably the same era as uh, yeah. Vitamin. So yeah, that's the one Vitamin. I was thinking oranges, and I thought that doesn't sound right. <laughs> that probably uh, is a manga. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if that's a shoujo manga somewhere. Probably is. Um, but it does have that feel, not just because of the art style and how the characters look, but also the feel of it. Because mm. um, the because sh- the uh, manga series is about this uh, fallen um, child star mm. uh, who Kato. Ayo Nami, I think. Yeah, I didn't remember her last name either. Uh, Kato. Uh, so her love first name is Kato. Oyama. Yeah. Oyama. Yeah, it's a Oyama common one. But um, Kato was um, yeah, upcoming child star who had fallen out of grace, mm. and now she's just kind of aimlessly wandering around her life. Mm. You know, mm. trying to figure out. You know, just she's not even trying to figure out what to do with her life. She's kind of mm. a recluse at this point, and so the story revolves around her trying to figure mm. out. You know. 
you know, eventually trying to figure out what to do in her life once she was given an opportunity to do so. So this was an interesting manga. I didn't like this that much at first. I really liked the first chapter, but then I kind of like, I kind of felt that the manga gives you a really bad bias in the first sort of half because it gives you all her, um, they like, they make you really feel sorry for her and they give Mm. you a good sort of way to connect with her. But in doing so, it kind of, and especially as a Western reader, I don't know if, <laughs> if this is different for other people overseas, but when I read it, like, when all the other characters are kind of being a dick to her, I can't really, like, relate or connect to them. When they're, like, telling her off for, like, being a reckless, like, being a bit of recluse mm. and not, like, doing anything. Or... Especially, like, her family, like, her sister. And I thought, I just kind of, like, look at that character mm. and I th- think to myself... I mean, what? Like, what happens? Yeah. Like, when, when one of the dudes who we get introduced to called K, when he, like, basically comes up to her and, like, says, like, he's a... He doesn't say, like, directly that he's a fan of her, but he kind mm. of, like, talks... Like, says, like, why were you... Why did you suddenly, like, go blank? Why did mm. you suddenly... And it's like, that's not a nice thing to say. Like, yeah. even if you're trying to not talk to her, like, she's famous and... Uh, he, a, he, sa- he said that because um, he didn't like the fact that she called the... Um, place that he was in a weird facility yeah um yeah which is kind of which in itself is still a mean thing to say yeah. but yeah that's kind of the impression we get from these two characters that, that, the- yeah i just at first i thought that i mean as i got on like you could see how much depth the authors put into the characters mm. and how much thought's actually gone into like what they're like and how how the things that happen to them have really affected them like Osaki, you can see she has like lots of trust issues and other issues because she she's been betrayed. She's had mm. things happen because her career. She's she didn't really want to be a childhood star. She's kind of forced yeah. into this by her parents, and they kind of drag her to be in like commercials. And then she just wants to be a normal girl at school and like fit in. And then they like drag her to do this play, and she meets this other girl called Nako, and she basically just wants to be friends of her. Because she's like finally found a friend, someone she can connect with. Mm. And then this girl, like basically, um, I, I loved reading the comments as I was reading the manga because you can scroll down. Because yes, we didn't read this legally. Sorry, I couldn't find a print of it. Um, so I love that like when I scrolled down to the comments, like I could see one of the comments was like, that bitch, that bitch. Because mm. w- what basically happens is like there are these two child stars um, and Nako like really looks up to her because she she's like done all these commercials and stuff, mm. and so she's like, oh, I want to be like you. I want to be able to dance and sing and do all that. And clearly, um, our main character is like Kato is like a much better dancer and singer and all that. She just naturally has a really good talent for it. And so Nako's like, can you teach me? Because um, she's like, I'm really struggling. She's like, Oh, I'll teach you. I'll help you out. And she does all of this, and then. Um, Nako basically we find out a way later on that she pretended to basically um, have like a dizzy problem and, and mm. fainted, like pretended she like was going to collapse so that she could go out so she, that she could impress everybody in the crew by being like, oh, I had this massive injury, but I'm, but I'm fine. You know, I'll, I'll work mm. for it. Like to basically show like how amazing and determination she's got. Cause that's a big thing in Japanese culture. Mm-hmm. So she, she like basically fakes that. And then she, after coming off stage, like she's so bloody, um, we find out later jealous of, of, of Kato. She basically comes off, tells her like, there's something wrong with you. You don't have any friends and like, mm. you're never going to steal my spotlight. And yeah. yeah, it was just really sad. Cause you can see like, she tried to become friends. Kato tried to become friends of her, tried to help her out. And then this girl just like stabs her in the back and basically kind of ruins her for like a long time. And, we see like uh, we see Narco like later on uh, has a bit of problems and like tries to try and recruit her and even even yeah. after everything um, so the manga still goes on. Narco is still kind of a bit of a horrible person yeah. and you you keep on I keep on reading this and I think some of the people in the comments too are like just let that bitch fail like mm-hmm. everybody was just like don't help her just let her fail you know but of course of course Kato is just like such a you know she. Deep down, she's a really nice person. Yeah. And she doesn't want to see anyone, like, fail miserably. So she tries to be, like, as helpful and as nice as she can. 
even to their own detriment. Yeah, I didn't go up to that point. I'm still in the beginning yeah, sorry, stages I'm of this. I'm spoiling a little bit for Eric here, but mm-hmm. um, it's more for you to look forward to. <laughs> well, hopefully I can, because this is actually a rather interesting read, um, especially yeah. with some similarities to a manga like Weidman and you know, dealing with a person's personal issues and how they've been hurt and how they're trying to get through it. Yeah. Um, Vitamin managed to, Vitamin managed to do this within what it's a lot eight shorter. chapters? Yeah, yeah, and it gets the point across. And, yeah, um, but I think, but I guess the um the reason for Cat Street's longer um longer length time would just characters. be more to yeah, well not just more characters, but because the um you know where Vitamin was much more um isolated case, uh, Cat Street seems to be a much a case that reaches out to a much wider mm. variety of um individuals. Yeah, well, there's there's a couple different characters in this as well. Mm-hmm. I, I, as as I said, there's more characters in this because Kato's not the only one of issues. We sort of um, yeah, Kato joins this like free school where there's like other people who are kind of recluses. Like we have one mm. who's um, we have one girl who's just she's trying. She's a bit of a goflo leader and she's yeah. making all these dresses to um, impress this guy she likes. Mm. And she's gonna make this amazing dress that she's gonna impress this guy with. And um, we see some stuff later on with that, that that that's actually very similar. Like we get some serious bullying stuff later on and that is like some tough reading. Um, and then I wouldn't say like it's like going to scar you, but it's going to make you a little bit sad. Um, and then, yeah, we have Ray who he's like an ex soccer player, like really famous one. And he he's like kind of um, left that and is trying to sort his life out, I guess. And then... Uh, I can't remember his name at the moment, but we have black haired computer dude. We we have the I'm just gonna say the the good look like the weirdly good looking computer nerd. <laughs> like the guy who's yeah. way too good looking to be mm. like a massive like computer nerd who spends all his time in his room. I'm like well, I mean, you're a little too good looking to be there. I mean he might be quite close to what we would think as someone who is um you know, a, a reclusive computer nerd themselves, because you know, as um, yeah, but did, Kato pointed his out, his skin he was looks the, really yeah. good, and his hair looks really good. You or don't it, get that if might you stay on your computer. All it day. might, it might be just because of the simplistic style of it, but potentially because of his thin size and mm. you know the time he might spend inside, he might actually be quite pale and much thinner yeah. than what's drawn. There were some. I, I do. I will say this: like his characterization is quite realistic. Like the way he talks, the way he acts. I'm like, yeah, I know some people like him. <laughs> like that seemed that seemed realistic. That's the thing I'll say with this. This manga is really realistic. I obviously really enjoy this because I read it in like two days, the entire thing. So yeah, if I if I really like I something, should, I'm gonna read it in like two days. Yeah, I should mention to everyone that my progress through both the anime and manga was uh all within an the span of one hour <laughs> and a half. Yeah, because I forgot to do it. <laughs> I forgot to. And, well, yeah. I had a head start because I watched the first episode of mm. Nana last week, and then oh, I just yeah. had to watch the other two this week. Yeah, and then I picked up <laughs> Cat Street. I literally for Cat Street, I um, looked up manga similar to to Nana because I was having a bit of trouble picking a theme, but oh, I knew yeah, we were going to do Nana. So I looked up similar stuff, and this was one of the results. And I'd never read any of it, or any. I just thought like, oh, the art looks kind of interesting. The premise looks mm. interesting. So I picked that. I read the first couple chapters. I didn't like the first couple chapters because, as I said, about the characters, I mm. thought they were kind of just mean. And then I was like, oh, well, I'll give it one more chapter. And then after that, it was completely hooked. So, Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have only managed to, as I've said, I've only managed to progress through this, this because of that. This series uh, is, yeah. is um, somewhat realistic, somewhat nasty at times, but not in like... Not in the way we've described with some other manga where it, it feels like it's been nasty to the audience. No, mm. like it's just telling a story and yeah. there are sad ups and down moments. No one really gets like super badly hurt in this. There's, there's nothing that I would say you need to put like a trigger warning or anything gone. Like there's nothing not safe for work too much. Like there's nothing too um, severe here. Most of it's, yeah pretty pretty tame but it's a really Mm. it's a really good manga i would highly recommend it um it was a lot of fun to read i absolutely loved cat street yes i would give it a eight out of ten for me only because uh because bitch you gotta you gotta get rid of that narco girl like don't hang out with her she's she's (laughs) not a good girl (laughs) well i haven't gotten up to that point so i'd still give it quite a few high marks because of 
you know the familiar feel it has to another um vitamin manga yeah to ma- to vitamin and just kind of just kind of the um realistic issues that there are to mm. read through and just trying to understand so i definitely recommend this to read and to hopefully watch if they have an anime of this all right do they have an anime of this no they do not oh uh, i know <laughs> damn it so now it's time we're gonna we're gonna end the episode we're gonna wrap things up but before we do uh, why don't we why don't we plug <laughs> as we're supposed to Eric we're supposed to mm. plug the old what's the Facebook page can what's our Facebook page it's alternating with Eric yeah, as go. I've been you know as the thing I never get wrong but apparently I get the YouTube page wrong which yeah, is so what's the YouTube page that's alternating with Eric as, as well. well so All a right. lot of our um, <laughs> a lot of our podcasts and let's plays and anything else you yep. guys can look through is we are missing with the Eric. episode we just released that's on Spotify mm. so all mm. our stuff's on Spotify yep the latest episode is not up on YouTube yet but I will put it up there this week so mm. it should be up there as well well um and then we yeah we should have some more content up there and then yeah we're we're, we'll i also post a lot of like the episodes or any updates to our instagram um or to my instagram to be more exact which is insert connor here you can see most of my posts i do some music some other stuff on there uh but mostly if you want to like see if the episodes came out on spotify that's the first place you'll see it um, because Eric's usually about a, a day or a couple minutes late, usually. <laughs> More or less, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But, uh, yeah, you can you can check out our stuff there. And we do have a Twitter page, but it's very inactive, so I wouldn't even check it out. Do um, we have an Instagram? We do. I, I just said that. It's no, yeah, you did. Connor here. So we oh, have, sorry. We have Instagram, Instagram, Connor Hare. blackout Hare. moment. We have <laughs> Facebook. We have a YouTube. <laughs> we don't have a Twitch or anything like that yet. Maybe later on. I don't hmm. know. Uh, we're thinking about doing some more Let's Play stuff, but we'll let you guys know. And we might be changing up the format. Uh, we're, we're still just sort of thinking about that, but we'll let you guys know with any updates on our uh, stuff. And we might even, we really need to have a website. I've been trying to work on that for ages, but uh, that's been something that's been kind of in the back burner. Mm. But this has been Alternating with Eric, episode 35. I'm Connor. And I'm Eric. Catch you later. Bye.